بالقرآن سديدا أحرف عربي مفيدة بالقرآن سديدة أحرف عربي مفيدة بالقرآن سديدة وبها أقرأ قرآني وبها أقرأ قرآني حتى يكتم الإيمان الله الله حتى يكتم الإيمان الله الله حتى يكتم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين In the name of Allah, the compassionate, the merciful All praise is due to Allah And may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his prophet Muhammad, his family and his followers all until the day of resurrection I'd like to welcome you to this new episode of the stories from the glorious Quran And we have today some beautiful stories coming about first the people of the cave and this is a known story by the way many Muslims do read the surah of Kahf the chapter on the cave during the day of Jumu'ah because one of the important things that our Prophet peace be upon him instructed us to do was to read the first ten ayahs or the last ten ayahs or verses from Surat Al-Kahf in order to prevent us from the trial and tribulation of the Dajjal, the false messiah. Now, obviously, when we talk about this very, very important story, we need to learn something, but it's one of the ways the glorious Quran tells us to be taught things of the past history in order to learn uh, from these incidents that did take place in the past so that uh, we'll have some of the wisdom of what happened to some people in the past. Now, talking about story of the people of the cave, let me read from chapter of the Glorious Quran. Now, this is chapter 18, Surah Al-Kahf, starting with verse 9. Now, verse 9 said, Am hasibta anna ashab al-kahf wal raqimi kanu min ayatina ajaba. Now, this is an address to the Prophet, peace be upon him. Did you not think about the people of the cave and the tablet, uh, which was actually kept for their own history. Let me summarize uh, this because the beautiful verses of the glorious Quran do tell us something uh, very, very nice and eloquent in the way the story develops. Now, starting with uh, these uh, righteous uh, people, young people, uh, because in the glorious Quran and the terminology of the Quran, they were fitya. Fitya is are, are people who are very young, still uh, full of uh, compassion and love of what they do. And uh, obviously, uh, during a time when there was so much uh, disobedience of Allah and love of Allah um, on the part of these uh, young people, they actually did not find any way except to escape from this society that was so much corrupt. There was no way that these people could uh, live and coexist with the dominant society uh, in their own time. This in no way would tell us that uh, our own young people could go and escape the society. But at that time, um, all people, most people that in fact um, were worshipping idols. And, uh, and these people, it's just an interesting way how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided these few uh, young people to come and to resort to a cave. Now Allah says, إِذْ أَوَى الْفِتْيَةُ إِلَى الْكَهْفِ فَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا آتِنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً وَهَيِّئْ لَنَا مِنْ أَمْلِنَا رَشَدًا They resorted to this cave which was in, in the mountain and uh, this was uh, during the uh, king by the name of Diqyanus in some part of the northern uh, uh, Syria um, probably in part of the south, southern Turkey today. They did not know themselves, by the way. They, they did not know each other. In fact, they were, everyone was afraid of the other up to that extent where they were fearful. 
that if they disclose themselves and they disclose their iman, they would be having some trouble. So what they, what they did actually, they were praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, give us from you some mercy and uh, make our matter easy for us. So Allah uh, brought them to this cave. They finally knew each other and what they were about. They were just trying to uh, get away from oppression of the tyrants and those who were worshipping the idols and they were after the Muslim people at their own time. But Allah uh, created some miracle out of uh, their staying in the cave because they spent there um, a number of years. But then Allah resurrected them so that uh, he would in fact uh, tell us an important sign about his own um, ability to bring back to life those who would die. Of course, the normal way for people to die is to die in this life and to wait until the hereafter when they will be resurrected again. But Allah gave us uh, the sign where they were brought back to life here in this part of the life as we call it the dunya. Now, they, uh, Allah is telling the story to Prophet peace be upon him. In fact, uh, to tell us about, uh, you know, uh, people who disbelieve in the hereafter. And there are many who disbelieve in the hereafter. Now, uh, this came to uh, the whole of the story or the uh, whole chapter of the cave came after the people of Quraysh, at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, asked them um, three questions. They said, well, tell us about uh, some earlier young people who resorted to a cave if you know their stories, their story, and also tell us about a man who moved about in, uh, in the earth, and also tell us about the spirit. All these three questions uh, were given to the Prophet, peace be upon him, as a challenge. And they said, well, if, they, if he would tell you the response to these questions, he is indeed a prophet. And the Prophet said, I will give you the answer tomorrow. He was hoping that Allah would uh, bring the revelation to him down he would have the answer but then the answer did not come in one day two days three days even a week two weeks after 15 days the answer came and in this surah Allah says don't say um, that you will be doing something um, and unless you say it is by the will of Allah Illa ayyasha Allah. Say insha Allah because you know nothing could be done without Allah's will and even the Prophet made that mistake and he even tells us about uh, the Prophet uh, Sulaiman peace be upon him who said that I will be going to a hundred because he was uh, a man that married uh, many women and he said I will go tonight I'll stop by 99 women and I will be uh, getting a child from every one of these women so that I can uh, have them as soldiers in the path of Allah. They will be righteous uh, young people. But then look at the end. What happened is only one lady got pregnant out of that incident and only with a half of a, a person. There was only half a child, a little young boy, because the Prophet said, that had he said inshallah, it would have been given to him, but he did not say inshallah. So this is important. This is one way to teach us. What we need to do is to put everything back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and of course, everything is in his own hands and he has the control uh, over everything. Um, in this case, these are people whom Allah has made their hearts firm in belief, وَرَبَطْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ إِذْ قَامُوا فَقَالُوا رَبُّنَا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَنْ نَدْعُوَ مِن دُونِهِ إِلَاهًا لَقَدْ قُلْنَا إِذَنْ شَطَطًا This is our Lord, is the Lord of the heavens and the earth. I, we will not call anyone um, as, as God. Otherwise, we would be doing uh, injustice and transgression if we do that. And, uh, of course, uh, they said about their own people, هَؤُلَاءِ قَوْمُنَ اتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِهِ آلِهَةً since they had this belief in the oneness 
of Allah the Almighty who is worthy of worship and no one else. And they said, well, this is our own people. And they said, uh, we will not take any God from him except with strong and evidence. And there is no one who would have transgression other than Allah. Of course, I do have lots of things and I will continue. But we do have a break and we will be back. So please stay tuned. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. We are back continuing with the story of the people of the cave. One of the very nice and interesting stories that are being told in the glorious Quran so that we can learn from these stories. Now, we earlier talked about these people in their place and their own time and uh, the king who was tyrant at their own time who was pursuing um, and following them. Now they uh, actually stayed away from their own people and they resorted to the cave. And in fact, one of the important signs, although there are many important signs in this story, is that when they resided, when they slept in the cave for 309 years. Now, Quran tells us even about the lunar calendar and the, um, and the Gregorian calendar. And in fact, when you, when, you, when you say 300 years in the Gregorian calendar, they will be translated into 309 years of the lunar calendar because in every year there are about 10 or 9 days that are extra or more. So it's a very interesting way of the glorious Quran, how it dealt with these interesting things. Now, when, when these people were asleep, uh, the door was uh, to the south and uh, the sun would come and rise from the east and sets in the west and it would allow some rays of the sun to enter in order to keep them well in terms of their bodies. But their, their spirits are of course taken because they were, they were in deep sleep and, um, and they uh, were not able to move. But subhanAllah, by the will of Allah, Allah is turning them on their own sides. They were just turned uh, to the right and to the left so that their bodies will not dissolute in the ground. And as one of the strong signs to keep people away from them is that they were, their dog was um, standing by the door and uh, as source of protection. And indeed, uh, when you, you think that they are awake, because of their health, the way they look, they're just, well, very well. They look so healthy and, and normal, but they are actually uh, in deep sleep. And um, uh, of course, if you would look at them, you would just run away out of uh, their own respect and awe oh, and shock as you see them with their own, you know, uh, the way they look. Allah just gave them these signs in order to keep them away from people so that they can spend the time that uh, Allah has given them to stay in that. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrected these people afterwards and, um, and he said, وَكَذَلِكَ بَعَثْنَاهُمْ لِيَتَسَاءَلُوا بَيْنَهُمْ قَالَ قَائِلٌ مِّنْهُمْ كَمْ لَبِثْتُمْ قَالُوا لَبِثْنَا يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْضَ يَوْمًا they, they just spent 309 years inside the cave and they, into the morning, they woke up in the evening, even before the sunset, and they thought that, well, someone was saying, well, how many days have we spent? Um, how long uh, did, we, did we spend here? And someone said, well, it's probably a, a day or even part of a day. Yawman aw badayaw. Then they, they said, some of them said, well, it's up to Allah. We didn't know, really, because they didn't have watches at, this, at that time or a clock to keep the time. So they, they knew that was up to Allah, they were just, this is what a, what a, a believer would, would have. And they said, well, you know, we feel hungry. So why don't you send some of your own people to the town so he can uh, bring us some food. But the Quran is telling us something very, very important here. He said, فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَيُّهَا أَزْكَى طَعَامًا He should look around and find, you know, which type of food that is more pure halal, permissible, not any type of food, but a, a food that is good and uh, alhamdulillah that is permissible to you. So he will bring you back with some provision that you keep 
uh, with. It's not really just you want to stuff your belly and, and your stomach with food and spend lavishly. This is not the point. The point is you want to have some provision. And of course, this person, waliyatalatta, he should be very soft and kind so that this person will not uh, raise any doubt about himself because, of course, people would know and then they, may, they might catch them and uh, in order not to be known to people because they were just fleeing uh, from people. You know, no one would need to, be, to know about you because if, if people would find you, they would really uh, bring you back to uh, disbelief and the disobedience of Allah. <inaudible> they might even stone you um, until death. Yeah, yeah, this is what we call Arrajm in Arabic. And uh, or they would bring you back by force into their own religion. And if you do that, you will not be successful. <inaudible> you will never be successful if you go back to the disbelief or to the religion of rejection of, of faith and, and the oneness of Allah. You know, these people were so much still, you know, even after these years, they still firm in their own belief and they, they want to keep on the right path. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his own uh, way and wisdom and determination. Well, you know, it was the time that Allah wanted people to know about them and what they, uh, what they were up to. To give their story is an evidence that he was able to keep them alive and to raise them from the dead or the deep sleep that they were in. And they would learn that whatever Allah promises is true. وَكَذَلِكَ أَعْثَرْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقٍّ وَأَنَّ السَّاعَةَ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهَا how many people do think about the hour and uh, they have some doubt about it. You know, there are many Muslims, by the way, who believe in the hereafter, who believe in the coming of the hour. Yet, when we talk about uh, the real preparation for the hour, they're not really realizing, you know, that the hour is so close and the hour is so horrible in the sense that this whole life will be brought to destruction and all the dead will be revived and, and brought back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And people were not really sure what they need to do with them. You know, they even found the story goes on like this when they uh, brought their own money because they had some money from their own uh, time of the king. Now, things did change from that time and a new king came and, and he was a righteous man and, and even society became better after 300 years, you know, things did change to the better. And when they went back and, and they showed them this currency uh, of what they had, they said, well, where did you bring this from? I mean, this is, this is something very old. And they said, well, now we know that this was from the king Dikyanus at that particular time and they said, well, we have to know where you are, you know, where you're coming from. And they discovered that he was, this uh, person was not alone. This young man was not only uh, by himself because there was a group of other, of his own companions that were just waiting inside the cave and, and they came over. They learned about them and they, um, subhanallah. But after some time when these people knew they were actually so much, into learning what they, uh, what they did. They said, well, go and resurrect some wall or close this cave so they would, be, they would stay in their own cave where Allah uh, decided that they would um, sleep. Let this be their own grave. And uh, some others said, well, we can resurrect a masjid or a place of worship around them so that we can remember these people in order to learn about them. What is important? is actually the significance of this whole story. You know, people were arguing, the Jews and the Christians and people of the earlier times, they were saying, well, how many are they? Are they three and uh, their dog is the fourth? Or were they five and their dog was the, uh, the sixth? Or actually, they were, in fact, they were not, they were just guessing. 
And by the way, this companionship of the dog is very, very important because, well, a dog could be a good and great companion in this case, and it was given this privilege that he, uh, that the dog, in fact, was again uh, put to sleep with them and was risen again. Only very few people knew about this, and uh, Ibn Abbas, Abdullah Ibn Abbas, who was very famous in learning about the glorious Quran, he said, I am the one of the few who know about them, and uh, we shall not argue about them. And, of course, they, they stayed there this number of years, 309 years, and Allah says, قُلِ اللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا لَبِثُوا لَهُ غَيْبُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَبْصِرْ بِهِ وَأَسْمِعْ مَا لَهُمْ مِنْ دُونِهِ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ وَلَا يُشْرِكُ فِي حُكْمِهِ أَحَدٍ There is no one like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has the full knowledge of the unseen in the heavens and in the earth. And he's, you know, you should fill your, your own um, hearing and seeing with his own knowledge. Uh, glory be to him because there is no partner with him. There is no one to share with him in his own decision, in his own ruling. That is the point. So this story tells us about the evidence of, of uh, raising people from the dead, keeping people alive, even when they are, when they are bodies alive and, and being nourished. Even with these number of years, 300 years is like three centuries. And, um, and yet they were, alhamdulillah, you know, so much into life again uh, as an evidence. And we have learned so much a teaching to our Prophet, peace be upon him, that in fact you should not say anything, you know, uh, that I will do it tomorrow or in the future, except when you say it is going to be done by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the story is not told just only for the telling of a story, but finally, you know, those people who ask the question about uh, these three things, one of them was the story of the people of the cave, where they actually were told this whole story in details. Of course, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was so much happy that uh, this revelation came down. And uh, he was able to tell the, the people of Quraysh at his own time, yes, indeed, this is in full the story of the people of the cave with all their own, alhamdulillah, you know, details so that he was, he was able to tell these people. And of course, the answer came, but they did not believe in that. Not the Jews who were actually telling uh, Quraysh to do, to ask him these questions in order to uh, challenge the Prophet, peace be upon him, nor it was uh, the people of Quraysh, polytheists, who were actually uh, asking the Prophet in order to, to prove him wrong. But then, yes, there was some delay in order to teach the Prophet, peace be upon him, to say something that is good, but at the same time, he gave them all what they asked for. And this is the way we need to do, is to be up to the challenge. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for us to support the believers wherever they may be. So that, is, that brings us to the end of our um, you know, story of the people of the cave as a sign of the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise the dead from their own death and bring them to life in this life. And this is going to be the same thing for all people at the end of time. And until we meet, inshallah, in the next episode about another story from the glorious Quran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.